OpenAI takes action against Iranian disinformation campaign. Legislators in the U.S. are concerned about a popular router made in China. Google's new Chrome updates will mask key data on screen sharing. And is it time to ban the use of work laptops for personal use? Welcome to Cybersecurity Today. I'm your host, Jim Love. OpenAI has recently uncovered and neutralized a cluster of ChatGPT accounts linked to Iranian disinformation operations. The company identified these accounts as part of a group known as Storm 2035, which has a history of creating fake news websites to influence elections. And the operators were using ChatGPT to generate both long-form articles and social media comments on topics including the U.S. presidential elections, the Israel-Hamas conflict, and Israel's presence at the Olympic Games. The operation is particularly noteworthy as it's the first instance OpenAI has detected and removed accounts that specifically targeted U.S. elections. The discovery comes on the heels of Microsoft's recent report on Iranian disinformation activities, which also highlighted spear phishing attacks on the U.S. presidential campaigns. As part of their investigation, OpenAI identified a dozen accounts on X, formerly Twitter, and one on Instagram that were spreading AI-generated content. Meta has since deactivated the Instagram account, linking it to a 2021 Iranian campaign that targeted users in Scotland. While the potential for AI to amplify disinformation is concerning, it's worth noting that most of the social media accounts sharing this content received little engagement. Ben Nimmo, principal investigator at OpenAI's intelligence and investigation team, advises vigilance against overreaction, stating, there's a big difference between an influence operation posting online and actually becoming influential by reaching an audience. It does emphasize, however, the increasing role that Iran is playing in global cyber warfare. Google is set to introduce privacy enhancements to Chrome for Android, addressing a long-standing vulnerability in screen sharing and recording. Currently, when users share or record their screens on Android devices, sensitive information such as passwords and credit card details can inadvertently be exposed. And this occurs in regular browsing tabs, though incognito mode already prevents screen capture entirely. Google is testing a new experimental feature called Redact Sensitive Content during screen sharing, screen recording, and similar actions. When enabled, This feature will automatically redact the entire area of a web page if it contains sensitive form fields like credit card information or passwords. It's important to note that this feature will only be available on Android 5 or later versions. While the exact release date for the general public is yet to be announced, tech enthusiasts can expect to see this feature in Chrome Canary, the experimental version of the browser, in the coming weeks. This development underscores Google's ongoing efforts to enhance user privacy and security in an era where screen sharing has become increasingly common for both personal and professional purposes. In addition to this new feature, Chrome for Android is also testing a new option to close all incognito tabs at once, further streamlining privacy management for users. Stay tuned for the official rollout of this feature in future Chrome updates. According to a recent post in Krebs on Security, more than a million domain names, including those registered by Fortune 100 companies, are at risk of being hijacked by cyber criminals due to authentication weaknesses at several large web hosting providers and domain registrars. This vulnerability, often referred to as the sitting duck problem, was highlighted in new research from security experts at Infoblox and Eclipsium. The issue arises when a domain's DNS or domain name system records are misconfigured or incomplete, allowing attackers to take control of the domain without accessing the legitimate owner's account. DNS is often referred to as the Internet's phone book, and it translates human-friendly website names into the numeric addresses computer uses to locate these websites. But it's possible, and it frequently happens, that domains can be misconfigured so that these lame domains can be exploited to redirect users to malicious websites or to be used in phishing attacks. The problem isn't new. Similar weaknesses were reported by Krebs as far back as 2019, but the new research shows that many hosting and DNS providers still have not addressed the issue. Dave Mitchell, principal threat researcher at Infoblox, emphasized, it's easy to exploit, very hard to detect, and it's entirely preventable. The report estimates that at least 30,000 of these vulnerable domains have been hijacked for malicious use 
since 2019. And for those who have domains under their administration, it may be well worth a thorough read of the original Krebs story and some of the other research on this issue. Links are in the show notes at technewsday.com. Two U.S. lawmakers are raising alarms over potential cybersecurity risks posed by Wi-Fi routers from the Chinese company TP-Link Technologies. In a letter to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, Representatives John Mullinar and Raja Krishnamurthy highlighted what they describe as an unusual degree of vulnerabilities in TP-Link routers, urging the Department of Commerce to investigate these risks and consider whether TP-Link products should be restricted in the U.S. The lawmakers expressed particular concern over China's stringent data protection laws, which could compel companies like TP-Link to share data with the Chinese government. This concern is heightened by recent cyber activities from the Chinese Advanced Persistent Threat Group, known as Volt Typhoon, which has been linked to hacking campaigns targeting U.S. critical infrastructure by exploiting home routers. In December 2023, the Justice Department dismantled a botnet linked to Volt Typhoon, which included hundreds of compromised routers from brands like Netgear and Cisco. TP-Link routers have also been exploited in the past, with hackers using them to launch attacks or adding them to botnets to disrupt websites with fake traffic. A recent incident in May 2023 saw cyber attacks on European foreign affairs entities attributed to a Chinese state-sponsored group known as Camaro Dragon. The group reportedly used a firmware implant in TP-Link routers to gain control of the infected devices and access sensitive networks. TP-Link claimed it does not sell routers in the U.S. and stated it has undergone a global restructuring with separate entities based in California, Singapore, and China. We found this a little strange as you can easily find TP-Link routers by a simple search and they're often highly rated, at least for home use. Concerns remain for all devices made in China, especially given China's regulations that require security vulnerabilities be reported to the government before being made public, potentially allowing state-sponsored hackers to first exploit these weaknesses. A shout-out to James Reddick at The Record for breaking this story. A recent study by cybersecurity firm ESAT has revealed a concerning trend. 90% of workers admit to using their company-provided laptops for personal activities. Now, why this might seem harmless, it does pose significant cybersecurity risks, particularly in an era where hybrid and remote work have become the norm. The study highlighted that many employees engage in risky behaviors on their work devices, such as viewing adult content, gambling, even accessing the dark web, and illegally streaming sports. These activities not only expose the individual to potential cyber threats, but also put sensitive company data at risk. One alarming finding is that two-thirds of the respondents admitted to accessing the dark web on their work laptops, with 17% doing this daily. Younger workers, especially those aged 16 to 24, were more likely to connect to unsecured public Wi-Fi and use personal USB devices, further increasing the risk of a security breach. ESET's global cybersecurity advisor, Jake Moore, emphasized the need for companies to implement stronger cybersecurity measures, particularly given the blurred lines between work and personal life in hybrid setups. Moore noted that while employees are often considered the weakest link in cybersecurity, the responsibility lies with companies to ensure that their endpoint security is robust and that their employees are educated about the risks. Despite the clear dangers, one in five workers admitted their work devices lacked any cybersecurity software, and a further 7% were unsure if their devices were adequately protected. This highlights a significant gap in both awareness and potentially in protection that companies need to address. As hybrid work continues to blur the boundaries between personal and professional use of devices, companies must impose stricter rules to protect their data and their employees, or at the very least, increase the training and awareness that these employees receive. I'm your host, Jim Love. Thanks for listening.